Our next speaker is a speaker from Seoul, Dr. Kiho Park, Glaucoma Progression, uh, Diagnostics in the Future and Promising Technologies. Thank you, Natalia. I'm glad uh, to join this uh, um, meeting, um, even though it is uh, by internet uh, telecommunication. Uh, My uh, talk is about glaucoma progression, the future options and perspectives. So my talk is a little bit uh, overlapping with uh, Chris Leung's uh, talk, but uh, I'm very glad uh, we have the uh, same conclusion in the most part, and I'd like to show my cases uh, so you can enjoy the cases of uh, a glaucoma patient with the progression. So as you all know, the glaucoma is a leading cause of blindness worldwide. And in glaucoma, optic nerve is damaged with loss of retinal ganglion cells and their axons. And in glaucoma, there is a characteristic visual field loss corresponding with the structural damage. This figure is a um, modified graph uh, from Medeiros paper from UCSD. You can see the uh, y-axis is uh, mean deviation and the x axis is glaucoma progression. So um, <clears throat> this left direction is progression. So in the early, early phase, early stage of glaucoma, the visual field change is very slow. So we call this a uh, ceiling effect. In the contrast, um, in RNFL thickness, in the early stage of glaucoma, the progression rate is very fast. And in the very last end stage of advanced glaucoma, the rate of change is very slow, so we call that floor effect. However, um, this floor effect um, occurs in the very last part, for example, about minus 27 decibels. So even in advanced glaucoma, both visual field and RNFL thickness change can be a good tool to monitor glaucoma progression before the floor effect. This is a case of a 49-year-old lady. Um, by routine health checkup, disc hemorrhage was detected by fundus photography in 2009. You can see disc hemorrhage in the uh, inferior temporal neuroretinal rim, and there is no um, definite um, RNFL defect. Um, fortunately, um, we can find her um, fundus photograph in 2006. So um, it looks like normal. There is no um, alpha-bullet defect or no disc hemorrhage in that, in that uh, uh, old photography. And we followed her um, with photographs. So this is 2006 and this is 2009. And this uh, RNFL photography was 2012. There was another disc hemorrhage in 2012 and another recurrent hemorrhage in 2016. You can see hemorrhage here. And this is uh, 2019. So, um, in 2009, only disc hemorrhage was detected, but you can see uh, some no fiber layer defect border border in uh, infratemporal region in 2016, uh, 2012. And it, it is darker, getting darker, and the width of the defect is increasing, so it is progressing. What about the visual field? The visual field by standard automated perimetry showed within normal in 2012 
and it was normal until 2016. And we found some abnormality in 2019. So even though the visual field was normal, we can find some no fiber layer change in 2012 by photography. What about the OCT? You can see um, eight OCTs in macular region. The first one is in 2012. So you can see there is a change in retinal ganglion cell layer. Ganglion cell layer defect is found even in 2012. And if we compare the peripapillary no fiber layer, OCT, and ganglion cell layer, OCT, you can see large defects were there by, can be detected by OCT. And it was progressed until 2019. So this area has been increased and retinal no fiber layer loss defect the width has been increased as well. So this is very clear and it is quite uh, similar to uh, Chris Leon's finding that before visual field defect, we can detect structural change in macula and also peripapillary retina by OCT and also by photography as well. So conventionally and fundamentally, we look at the visual field and we look at the optic nerve head and also peripapillary retinal no fiber layers. But why not for this region, macular area, where the more than 50% of retinal ganglion cells are concentrated? So ganglion cell complex is composed of no fiber layer, ganglion cell layer, and inner plex foam layer. So you can see these three complex here. And also in cross-sectional OCT, it is the, in this region. And in serous OCT, um, ganglion cell layer, inner plex foam layer, uh, we call that GCIPL. So it is um, GCL plus IPL. So GCL is composed of a uh, cell body of the retinal ganglion cells, and inner plex foam layer is the dendrites of the ganglion cells. And no fiber layer is composed of axons of the retinal ganglion cell. So in GCIPL thickness map of ganglion cell analysis, the right eye shows normal and GCIPL thickness map shows donut shape symmetrical um, color map. So yellow and red means thickest area and blue means a thinner area. If there is a defect in retinal ganglion cell layer and in a plex foam layer, so there is a defect uh, with the change uh, in color. The yellow color is changed into blue in this uh, thinning, thinner uh, area. And compared to the normative database, deviation map shows uh, red or yellow color, which means significant, statistically significant thinning area. In visual field, we are doing glaucoma hemifield test, which compares the sensitivity of superior and inferior retina across the horizontal raphe. So this, in this case, there is a, a symmetry between superior and inferior, and the result is outside normal limits. Similarly, we can perform ganglion cell inner plex foam layer thickness um, difference between the horizontal refi, and we can make our, our own custom software which perform glaucoma um, GCIPL hemifield test. So in this case, there is a significant difference 
across the horizontal line in GCIPO thickness. So it comes outside normal limits in this test. So this is an example. The first row is a healthy eye. You can see no fiber layer, visual feel, and GCIPL is normal, donut shaped, and GCIPL hemifill test result is within normal. The second row is preperimetric glaucoma. So the visual field is normal, but you can see very early change, early thinning in inferior temporal no fiber layer. Even though it was not detected by deviation map, but in GCIPL, um, hemifield test, you can see there is asymmetry in this region. So the result is outside normal limits. The third row is early, per, early perimetric glaucoma. So there is a visual field defect and corresponding superior retinal no fiber layer defect. And of course, GCI pill thickness was thinned in superior part, and the result is outside normal limits. And the area under the ROC curve for this uh, GCIPL hemifill test was quite good. So it was about uh, 0.96 or 0.97. This is uh, another case with a 59-year-old uh, gentleman. Um, you can see in 2003, there is no definite um, glaucomatous damage in neuroretina rim and no fiber layer. But um, when we follow up this patient, some, some subtle change here with some um, disc hemorrhage in, in the neuroretina rim. And another neuroretina uh, uh, no, uh, optic disc hemorrhage and no fiber layer change in 2006. And no fiber layer defect is uh, getting more prominent. And another hemorrhage and recurrent hemorrhage. And you can see very clear no fiber layer, new no fiber layer defect uh, close to the macula. And also the old RNFL defect is getting wider. In 2015 and 16, and this is 18, and this is the most recent one. Um, but you can see um, between 2003 and 2012, there was a clear uh, change in no fiber layer. But from 2012 and 2019, the change is not, not quite clear. Um, what was the reason? It was because um, there was cataract progression between these periods. So in photography, with cataract, mild to moderate cataract, the RNFL defect cannot be easily detected. However, OCT could. You can see RNFL defect is increased by OCT, it, it can be easily detected. So um, the laser light in o uh, by OCT can penetrate um, mild to moderate cataract. But uh, uh, by photography, the visible light cannot clearly uh, improve the photography quality. <clears throat> so in this case, OCT may be a very good tool to detect progression. And also, if we can integrate peripapillary OCT image with ganglion cell, macular ganglion cell analysis image, we can get more information about the glaucoma progression. So this case is um, the change in GCIPL was earlier than RNFL change. So you can see clear change in our uh, G, uh, GCIPL layer um, before 
RNFL change was detected. This is opposite case. The change in retinal no fiber layer was detected earlier than GCIPO thickness change. So it is case by case. So if you combine those two um, images, peripapillary image and GCIPL image, you can get more information about glaucoma progression. Recently, uh, the researchers from Australia showed very interesting paper. So in normal tension glaucoma, the change in GCIPL was earlier than RNFL change. So which means uh, in normal tension glaucoma, you can detect more earlier change in GCIPL compared to retinal no fiber layer thickness compared to high tension glaucoma. So um, this is quite uh, similar to our own uh, result from South Korea where the most of POH patients are normal tension glaucoma. And if we use wide field imaging by swept source OCT, we can get more information to detect glaucoma progression. So in the uh, case of the right-hand side, you can see clear RNFL defect in wider um, swept source OCT image uh, compared to the conventional image here. If we, if we only perform the peripapillary or macular scan only, we may not detect this area change in retinal no fiber layer. This is another case. The upper um, part is spectral domain OCT, and the lower part is swept source OCT. So in wider scan, wide field swept source OCT scan, you can see superior RNFL defect and ganglion cell layer change here. But conventional spectral domain OCT by uh, serous OCT, you cannot detect the change because it is outside the uh, ganglion cell analysis area. So this is another example that why the field can detect um, earlier change in progression or detection of glaucoma. The next part is about the probability deviation map developed by Donald Hood by Columbia University. So using swept source OCT, wide field scan, including both macula and disc can be performed. And visual field test points were overlaid by flipped RNFL and GCIPL thickness significance map, which is called super pixel map. So this is an example, superior temporal RNFL defect. Um, this structural change uh, can be uh, flipped and overlaid on the visual field. And the significance can be color coded. So um, red and dark red means significant change. Yellow means borderline significance. So this map can assist in detecting the probability of glaucoma progression in the patient visual field. So uh, we analyzed pre-perimetric glaucoma patient, more than 40 patients. And this is an example of a patient, inferotemporal RNFL defect. And this defect was overlaid and flipped and overlaid on the visual field. And his visual field was, you can see here, it's with, within normal. But there are some suspicious points uh, with decreased sensitivity. An interesting finding was that these two points exactly matches with the uh, probability map um, structural defect. And this is another example 
um, superior temporal and inferior temporal RNFL defect. And this uh, probability map was overlaid on the visual field. And the patient visual field it was within normal. However, those suspicious points were in the in this probability um, map. And further interesting finding was after a few years, the future visual field change was exactly matches with those probability maps. So the structural changes on the swept source OCT wide field probability maps could detect or predict the visual field changes in these preperimetric glaucoma eyes. So I'm going to um, talk about the future. So this is wide field megahertz OCT imaging of patient with diabetic retinopathy. So you can see the scan area is quite big with 60 degrees. So it can cover uh, quite larger area. So in future, um, this uh, megahertz OCT imaging can be applied to glaucoma patients as well. And three years ago, we first um, introduced the concept of lamina cribrosa curvature index, which was calculated, which was defined as the difference between the mean lamina cribrosa depth and the anterior uh, lamina insertion depths. So which means um, how much the anterior surface of lamina is posteriorly bold. So this, if the index is bigger, it means the lamina anterior portion of the lamina is posteriorly um, displaced like, uh, like, like this shape. And um, we plot this index with the mean deviation progression decibel per year. And we found that uh, it is quite correlated. And af after a certain point, the visual field progression is uh, the rate is faster. So this is an example with, uh, um, with lamina cribrosa uh, larger index larger lamina cribrosa, cribrosa index, curvature index, which means posteriorly bold lamina at the baseline um, shows future glaucoma progression as shown by these um, visual fields. And at the baseline, quite flat anterior portion of lamina cribrosa, these, this patient showed quite stable visual field. So the eyes with greater posterior bowing of the lamina cribros at baseline showed a subsequent visual field progression. This is the first um, telephone invented by Graham Bell in late the 80s, uh, 18th century, uh, 19th century. And this is the first um, cell phone um, invented. And now the technology develops quite fast and we can put it on our wrist. So diagnostic technology in glaucoma is quite similar. It is quite fast and it is beyond our imagination. So recently we have deep learning algorithm so the diabetic retinopathy can be detected by this deep learning quite effectively by retinal fundus photographs. And also fundus photographs um, after deep learning can tell us how much the patient has cardiovascular risk factors. Similarly, if we combine fundus photography and OCT image and teach artificial intelligence by deep learning will improve the decision and detection of glaucoma quite effectively. This is an interesting example. This is a two-dimensional photograph of the optic nerve head 
And if we train、um, this image by deep learning, we can get higher resolution and further deep learning can rebuild this two dimensional image into three dimensional. So it was、um, last year we published in ophthalmology. So you can enjoy this 3D image is from、um, deep learning and it was built three dimensionally. So technology is quite amazing recently. So it is、uh, our future how to detect glaucoma and how to detect glaucoma progression. So, recent paper by Dr. Medeiros showed that where the deep learning algorithm is looking at for the quantification of glaucomatous damage. So, the heat map shows these red a r e a is where the deep learning is looking at to. to Detect glaucoma damage and how, how they quantify it. So, the actual OCT RNFL thickness of this patient was 61, and deep learning predicted thickness was 57, and deep learning predicted quite well the probability was 0.99 in this case. But there are some obstacles. The ultimate goal of glaucoma detection and progression will be imaging each individual retinal ganglion cells in vivo, in human. But there are two obstacles for that. One is the problem in high resolution because of the optical aberration. So, as you can see, the optical aberration will. Will make p r o b l e m when we get higher resolution. The other one is retinal ganglion cell itself has low reflectivity because the cell itself is quite transparent. How to overcome this? To overcome optical aberration, the adaptive optics technology can be applied. So, through the wavefront sensor, the distorted wavefront can be corrected by adaptive mirror. So, it is corrected, and corrected wavefront can be detected with this system. So, after correction of optical aberration with this、uh, adaptive optics system, you can see clear image of the galaxy. So,、um, this is the、uh, adaptive optics OCT for human、uh, developed by UC Davis、uh, team. And using this adaptive optics OCT, you can get clearer image in this area. As you can see, there are clearer i m a g e in this ISOS and RP area. So, it is our future. So,、um, imaging individual neurons in the retinal ganglion cell layer of the living eye can be、um, uh, performed using adaptive optics, scanning laser ophthalmoscopy. And also, using adaptive op optics OCT, imaging and quantifying ganglion cell and other transparent neurons in the living human retina is possible. But the limitation until now is that the scan area is too small and the acquisition time is short. So that's why it is not、uh, clinically applied right now. But in、uh, recent future, we can get this. So, in summary,、um, future detection of progression can be. Composed of integration of the techniques and wide field imaging and artificial intelligence. 
And lastly, in vivo RGC imaging. So in uh, take home uh, messages are in early glaucoma, macular GCI PL defect is frequently detected before corresponding RNFL defect, especially in normal tension glaucoma. Wide field scan can detect a structural defect, which might have been missed by conventional RNFL or macular GCI PL analysis. The structural changes on the swept source OCT probability maps could detect or predict the visual field changes in pre-perimetric glaucoma eyes. In POH eyes with great uh, posterior bowing of the lamina cribrosa, the subsequent visual field progression rate may be higher. Future detection of progression of glaucoma may include integration of the techniques, wide field imaging, artificial intelligence, and in, in vivo RGC imaging. I'd like to thank uh, our um, collaborators, and also I'd like to welcome all of you to the 2020 Asia Pacific Glaucoma Congress, which will be held in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much, dear Keho. Really fascinating. Fascinating. Mm presentation. In South Korea, patients with normal tension glaucoma, the predominant patients, actually mean that tonometry is not so useful in glaucoma. What is left? Perimetry. But we have to identify pre-perimetric glaucoma. Therefore, you see such impressive technologies. I was so much impressed by your archive because you monitor patients for years, yes, and yes. So you have pictures of the founders of the eye and OCT data. Therefore, you can identify very early changes in RNFL. Thank you very much. It impresses so much. As I understood, Norman tangent glaucoma means that you should monitor macular area, and you're looking for earliest changes in the macular area. 